Good evening, everyone. Can you believe it? We have made it to the final week of the high school regular season, week number nine. A few teams were battling for their playoff lives tonight, needing just one win to secure a postseason berth. Other teams needed one victory to win their conference championship outright. With one more win tonight, Kingsford could go undefeated in the Great Northern Conference and win the title. They would have to beat Escanaba to do so. In the second quarter, Kingsford already leading 28-0. Reed Larson carries the ball up the middle, and he would score from about 10 yards out, and the Flivers had a commanding 35-0 lead in the second. Later in the quarter, Larson on the run again. He would bounce off a few tacklers, as he usually does, but he fumbles there at the goal line. Cole Tengestall pounces on the ball in the end zone for another Kingsford score, 42-0 Flivers. In the third quarter, Escanaba would get on the board here from their own 31-yard line. David Fallish would keep the ball, and we'll see him in a second as Fallish goes 69 yards to the house. Escanaba would score again, but Kingsford way too tough tonight. The Flivers win 49-13, winning the GNT title outright. To the scoreboards, Iron Mountain beats up on Norway 34-13. In Manistique, the Emeralds needed double overtime. They win this one 12-6. Disregard the scoreboard, Manistique 12-6. The Emeralds are off to the postseason tonight because that was win number six. In Barriga County, Onsenagan 44, Barriga 14. And Lance defeated Munising. 47-6. Back to the highlights, an eight-man football Bel Air visited Rapid River. No score in the first quarter. The Eagles would strike first. Chase Small would find the end zone on a toss sweep. A seven-yard score, and that made it 6-0 Bel Air early. Rapid River, though, would respond in a hurry, like they always do. Quarterback Jake Pearson keeps the ball on the QB draw. A five-yard touchdown run, two-point conversion good, and Rapid River led 8-6. Later on in the first, Pearson from his own 31 goes on the run again. He fakes out a Bel Air defender, and Pearson is like the Elton John song. Rocket man! I'm not going to sing it. Pearson, 69 yards to the house, 16-6 Rapid River after one quarter of play. In the second, the Eagles get their offense moving once again. Quarterback Zach Smith fakes out the fullback dive, as well as the pitch, and Smith picks up 25 yards on the play. Bel Air would score a touchdown on the drive. And the Eagles, they trailed early, but they come back and beat Rapid River 28-16. And Bel Air 6-3, and they are on their way to the playoffs, as is Rapid River with a record of 7-2. Back to the scoreboard, Cedarville wins 1-0 via the forfeit over Midpen. Superior Central wins by 25 over UN Trout Creek. And Ingadine puts up 39 points tonight in a rout of Brimley. Let's head downstate to Petoskey. Yes, I said Petoskey, where Menominee played tonight. In the first, the Maroons direct snap to James Brown, who carries the ball up the middle to the one-yard line, setting up the next play, which, as you might guess, would also go to Brown. Right at the gut once again. This time, he carries the ball over the goal line for the touchdown. Menominee led 7-0 early. Petoskey, though, they would counter with a touchdown of their own. Quarterback Quinn Emil, when a PA fake would throw it up to Tony Diagostino for a 45-yard touchdown pass, and that tied the game up at seven apiece. This game was close to route, but Menominee squeaks one out on the road tonight, a big road win, 22-17 over the Northmen. Back to the scoreboards, Houghton defeats neighboring Hancock 29-14, and go Gibbick, the Miners, good for them. They are now playoff eligible with a 26-6 win over Ironwood. Forest Park defeats LLH 33-14, Stevenson all over North Central, it looks like the Jets will have unfortunately miss the playoffs. The Sioux, they'll make the playoffs. They defeated Newberry tonight by a final score of 38-6 to clinch a playoff spot. And West Aaron County, also winners tonight over Bark River Harris. And the Huskies hosted the number one ranked Minnesota Gophers at McInnes. No score three and a half minutes into this one. Minnesota would turn the puck over at the Huskies blue line. And Tech had a two-on-one the other way. Jujar Kara would feed Alex Baton, who falls, gathers himself, and goes top shelf from his knees. What a goal! Tech strikes first, it's 1-0. Later in the first, both teams playing four on four. Nate Condon makes a move and gets a shot off. Copley would stop it, but Nate Schmidt puts in the rebound and that ties the game up at one. A little over five minutes left in the first. Tech would be on the power play. Ryan Ferns shot from the point would be tipped in front by Blake Patilla. And the Huskies regain the lead at 2-1. Just 22 seconds later, the Huskies strike once again quickly tonight. The puck again at the Tech blue line. Another two-on-one for M uh, MTU. C.J. Ike throws the puck in front of Dennis Ricks, who beats Michael Shabrowski via the five-hole, and the Huskies take down the number one team in college hockey, 5-3. At 15-10, two goals. Came out, uh, played hard, uh, had a real good start, and then uh, kept that going for three periods. Obviously, we'll carry that in tomorrow uh, when you can 
anytime you can get a goalie out of the game, that means you're, you're doing something right. And both teams will play again tomorrow night in Houghton to wrap up their series. Puck drop is set for 7.07 p.m. In other college hockey scores tonight, Lake State scores early and then gets an empty netter to beat Bemidji State 2-1. Notre Dame gets revenge last night from losing to UMD. They win tonight over the Bulldogs 4-1. Let's go to Omaha, Nebraska, or wait, before we get there, Michigan State winners 3-2 over Niagara. The Spartans trailed 2-0 in that one early. And Michigan, 6-3 win over Bentley. Now let's go to Omaha, Nebraska, is where the NMU hockey team is at this weekend, playing against the Mavericks. In the second, the Wildcats trail 2-0. Brent Gwitt is in all alone on a breakaway, and he beats Jared Carroll through the five. Holy short-handed goal by Gwitt, and UNO led 3-0. Later in the second, NMU on the power play. Kyle Fulmer rips one toward the goal, but Mavs goalie John Falker is there to deflect the puck away. Still in the second, the Mavs back on the attack. Johnny Searfoss throws a backhand shot on net. Corot would eventually cover the puck for the save. However, UNO would put five goals past Corot before he was pulled in the third period. The Mavs hand the Wildcats their first loss of the season, 5-2. In women's soccer today, Michigan Tech loses their first conference game of the season at Allendale to Grand Valley, 5-0. Northern Michigan also loses on the road tonight to Fair State, 5-2. Tavon Sellers and Kim Rietfeld scored for the Wildcats. Well, after a tough road trip in Illinois, the NMU volleyball team returned home tonight. A good crowd showed up at Vandeman Arena. Cats head coach Dominic Yoder instructs Andre Ring where to serve the ball to, and Ring would dial up a perfect serve right on the corner of the line for the Wildcat point. NMU led 15-5 in set number one. Still in the first set, Wildcats up 18-9. Kalisha Harley sets up Kelly Heron, and Heron slams the ball right down the middle. The Wildcats took the first set 25-13. In set number two, the Panthers of Ohio Dominican would strike first in the form of a block. Tori Thompson denies Sarah Hamilton at the net. The Panthers led early 1-0. Still tied at two apiece, the Wildcats would go back in the attack. Heron, again this time, she just kisses the ball over the net for the point. Heron and Lena Lopes led the Cats with 12 kills apiece. Northern defeats ODU three sets to one. In Houghton, Matt Jennings and the Huskies volleyball team won the fifth and final set 15-13 over the Tiffin Dragons to win the match three sets to two.